Ooh. Hey, what's going on guys? Nick from Practically Tactical. I got Jesse from 4C Tactical. And on today's video, what we're gonna give you guys is a couple concealed carry tips inside of a vehicle to set you up for success. So Jesse, when we look at the kind of the overall concept of vehicle and some concealed carry, you know, a lot of it brings me back to when Steve Fisher was on the show episode 45, we talked about some vehicle tactics is, you know, we're in a confined space, we're in a box. Right. And so we really need to set ourselves up for success in a small area. So the number one rule I think would be is the car is not a holster, right? Right, right. You've got a lot of people out there doing the dedicated car holster where they get in, they mount their gun into some sort of system or take it out of their normal holster, put it into a, you know, a dedicated car holster. And yeah, I'd like to see us get away from that. I like to keep the gun on me. I like to keep it present where I can get out of it. If I have to get out of the vehicle quickly, I don't have to worry about trying to get that gun out with me. I can just get out of the car at that time. And that goes for anything. That could be, you know, a car accident or even getting pulled over by the police. You know, I don't want them to walk up and immediately feel threatened before, you know, just seeing that gun right there. So I think that's a very good point. So what we're going to do is kind of give you guys some uh, tips, uh, hints, tricks, whatever you want to call it there. From our background, our experience of concealed carrying, taking some training. But obviously, the big thing here is no matter what is on this video, if, every, if they want to learn more about this, they need to go out and get trained, right? Right, definitely. There's so much when it comes to the car. And I mean, you spend so much time in it. You definitely need to go and find a reputable source and learn, I mean, just the intricacies of actually working from a car and getting away from a car. This is kind of just some tips to set you up for success when you get in. You know, what's what I found most comfortable for me for day to day, run into Walmart, you know, run in your daily errands and what also would make it, you know, yeah, setting yourself up for success to where if something did go down, you could readily access that firearm. Yep, absolutely. So for you guys out there that might be looking for qualified instructors on this type of subject, there's a, a lot of them out there. William Petty, oh, Steve sure. Fisher, Sentinel Concepts, and of course, we have Mr. Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Those are just a few of the very reputable ones out there. But all right, guys, so that's it for our little intro part here. Let's jump into the actual vehicle and give you guys a couple tips to set yourself up for success. All right, guys, I find for me when I first get in the car, I like to throw my cell phone in the cup holder. It gives me fast access to that. Um, my first thing that I do is I take and I tuck my t-shirt behind the gun and my spare mag. I'm carrying a Glock 19 and a Four City Tactical Sheepdog, as well as a Four City Tactical inside the waistband mag carrier. And I do this because it not only keeps the clothing clear of the firearm, but it also just adds a little more comfort, a little more padding for those long rides. Next thing I do is I take the seatbelt and same thing, I come in right behind the gun and the magazine. And I find that pushes it up enough to give you that nice full firing grip. If you need to draw and come out, you can change mags. And then once the firearm's out and you need to exit the vehicle, you have nothing to clear. It's already, the gun's out of the way, so the seatbelt's right there. You can get out the car quick and uh, handle business. So that's what works best for me. Let's take a look at Nick's setup. All right, guys. So my setup's going to be a little bit differently than Jesse's as I don't carry appendix. So what I do is I usually get in, again, I'll take my phone out of my pocket, throw it in the cup holder. So I'm carrying about a three o'clock Glock 17 and a sheepdog holster. And then at about the nine o'clock, I have the 4C tactical inside the waistband mag carry. So I'll pretty much do the same setup there as I'll take my shirt and I'll tuck it behind my firearm. Again, if I ever need to get to it for some reason, that's one less layer of clothing. That's, you know, one quicker way to get the gun in the fight. I'll do the same for my spare magazine as well. So I've got the shirt tucked in. Next thing I'll do is I'll grab the seatbelt. And what I'll do is I'll pull it all the way. I'll get the buckle in and then I use the spare area, the extra seatbelt. And again, I will run it behind the gun as well, both parts. And again, what I'll do is I'll make sure my mag carrier is not being obstructed by the seatbelt as well. So then I'm pretty much in and I'm good to go. Now, I can tell you some downsides of the way I carry versus appendix is getting to my gun is definitely not as easy as appendix. So something you can do though, is if you can actually take your gun and for example, shift it forward some, that will help you get to it quite quicker. The, the more you can move to a 12 o'clock position, the faster and easier you're gonna be able to get, your, to get to your gun. So that's a little bit of a consideration to remember of where you're carrying your gun on the body. The more back you are, the harder it is going to be to get to your gun. So that's my little basic setup is when I get into the vehicle, but let's move on to some other tips. All right, so as we discussed at the beginning of the video, we do not want our vehicle to be a holster. 
So let's go into a few downsides if we go with that approach. You know, number one, ultimately, situational awareness is going to be our, our biggest factor in getting out of a situation or at least giving ourselves the best chance to win if something bad does happen. So that could be a couple different things. Always being aware of your surroundings. Biggest thing would be making sure your doors are locked in your vehicle. So when you get in, you get set up, you go to turn that key, you're going to lock your doors. That's going to be one of the biggest factors of stopping someone from getting a jump on you at least. So always make sure to do that. But let's discuss, you know, putting our gun, you know, wherever it might be, just inside of our vehicle. So I have my Glock 17 sitting out right now just in the cup holder. So let's say, for example, maybe we need to do a quick little turn real quick, and those Gs end up throwing our, our, our gun out of reach, you know, and then it's tumbling around. You obviously don't want that. What happens if we get into a car wreck, and that gun is just going to go flying, and who knows where, that could actually, you know, maybe hurt yourself or somebody else. And the, the biggest thing is it puts your gun out of your control, takes it out of your hands. So if something were to happen, that gun is going to take you longer to get to and get into the fight. So that's going to be a really big priority of keeping that gun on you to where if something does happen, you have your gun on you. So most importantly, let's say everything goes wrong and nothing goes how we try to plan it out in this and somebody gets a jump on you. They're either, you know, hijacking your vehicle or trying to take your wallet, what have you, is if they make you, you know, hold you at gunpoint and have you exit the vehicle, if you try to make a quick movement to try to get your gun or something along with that, or they see a gun laying out, that's going to be bad. So that's why we always stress keeping your gun on you and, you know, as concealed as best as you can, but also readily available as the best as you can. Remember, guys, situation awareness in a small, confined environment is going to be your number one priority of, you know, giving yourself the best setup to win. Again, situational awareness and the biggest thing, locking your doors. And if you can just drive off and get out of the situation, that's going to be your best key. Let's look at some other tips. All right, guys, our next tip is on spare ammo. As I stated earlier, that I carry in an inside the waistband mag carrier, but I know a lot of you are carrying your spare magazines in your pocket or maybe a, a spare compartment in your car, and I want to kind of show you the downside of that. As you know, we're in a confined space here, so all our movements need to be limited, and we want to be as quick as possible. So digging in my pocket, along with other stuff, I keep a flashlight that clips on there, you know, it, it takes a good few seconds to get to that mag over a dedicated mag pouch that sits out I mean you can just see how much easier that is so I, I would like to see us get away from yeah putting the mags in our pockets in the car or storing them in a glove box or something along those lines extra mags in the glove box is okay but yeah a dedicated spare mag for sure on, on the body in a dedicated mag pouch is uh, what I would prefer for the vehicle All right, now let's talk passenger we're not the driver all the time a few things to consider, especially for my setup, appendix. Um, when I come to get out of the vehicle on this, I have to be a little more conscious. As the gun will already be out when I'm the driver, it doesn't interfere with my mag. It doesn't catch and allows me to get out of the car. Uh, however, as when I'm the passenger, you can see that I have a tendency to let that mag catch. Now, if I move or try to get out, I'm sure it'll come, but I don't want to strip that magazine. So one thing I have to be conscious of is I've got to make sure I clear that magazine before I actually exit the vehicle. Now, another thing you want to consider is everything's kind of flip-flopped on that. So whereas, you know, you might come across with your left hand because it's faster. And that's where getting good training comes in and actually practicing getting in and out of the vehicle. Again, I can't stress enough that we're in the vehicle quite a bit. So to go find some good proper training to learn how to fight from it. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys took away, uh, you know, some tips or hints you know, stuff to set yourself up for success inside of a vehicle. You know, Jesse, and I, and I think some people, what they really don't understand too, is we're in a confined space, we're in a small space. If something bad does happen, it's going to be up close and personal. That's something that people really need to mental in their process is this is going to be a hands-on, most likely, if, if it's in a vehicle, a hands-on encounter. You're going to be grappling. You're, there's, it's not going to be pretty. Definitely. Whether definitely. it be, you know, and some also to consider is knives, blades, you know, that type of stuff. That's really not our forte. But that's something to consider too of not only yourself, but also the perpetrator with you. Knives are deadly in a confined space. And again, you know, there's more training out there that you should look at in, in that aspect, but it's going to be up close and personal and it's probably going to be ugly. Yeah, and I think it comes down to gear dependent too. I mean, I understand everyone's setup's a little different. Obviously, this is just our setup, how we like to carry what's most comfortable for us. But the big thing to take away from this is keeping that gun on you. You want to maintain control of that firearm at all times. Um, also, restricting movement. You're in a confined space, so you want to maintain easy easily accessible things you know you want to be able to get to that mag that spare mag you want to be able to 
get out of the vehicle if you need to, everything in a quick manner. So I think it's running your own gear through and doing a gear validation on yourself. I mean, there's enough good gear out there that there's really no excuse to not be set up in that kind of situation anymore. So I think that's absolutely true. Again, so for everybody out there, you know, next time you get in the vehicle, run run a couple of checks. I think something too the smart would be, you know, when you, when you get in with your family or whatever, you know, hey, this is my set, this is what I'm doing here, you know, just so you're aware, this is what's going on. This could be, you know, your responsibilities. I have a spare mag right here. You know, it could be those little things of, again, just setting yourself up for success that, heaven forbid, something bad happens, you know, everybody is keyed in on, on the aspects of no, that's inside what, the vehicle. Planning is the key. Planning yeah. is the key. So, again, set up a plan. That's really important. Again, get training. Can't stress enough of, you know, again, we talked about Aaron Callen from Sage Dynamics, Steve Fisher from Sentinel Concepts, uh, William Petty, the, the light, all the lumens and vehicle mm -hmm. master. There's plenty of people out there. You can get some training on this and, again, really become informed with it. So... I think that about wraps it up. Again, we, we hope this helped you guys out and really just setting yourself up for success. Again, if you want to take it to the next level, go get training. I think that's most important. So, Definitely. Again, guys, be safe, take care. Until next time.